What do you want from us? Fiddle diddle. Ah! Join me, and together we will rule the world. No thanks, dog. I'm good. But you would become powerful beyond belief. I said no. Let's kill. I'm the king of the world! The Roo sends his regards. Avenge me! It's true, I am your daughter. <gasps> and your mother. Wait. And your brother. What? Brothers and sisters! Today we not only fight for our loved ones, today we fight for our freedom! For Azeroth! I'm okay! Guys? Help? It? What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty good, but don't you think it's a little bit over the top? People want to see stuff like that! Drama! Six and explosions! I know, I know, but it just doesn't feel right. I think we should stick to our usual intro. Okay, I call Quaint into Kainslauer next shoot. <laughs> Drama. Like that will ever be big on YouTube. Oh, hey there kangaroos, welcome back to World of Rookraft. As you can see, we got ourselves a new place and we're having a little housewarming party. Why don't you grab something to drink and join the fun? Hang on, what's the point of this video again? Right, we just finished reviewing all the classic zones on the Eastern Kingdom and today I want to continue our series with the classic zones on Kalimdor. So today I want to talk about the Alliance zone called the Blood Mist Isle. This is the follow-up zone to the Dranai starting area, so I would recommend you to check that video out first. But it's a little bit loud here, isn't it? Why don't we check out the portal room and talk about the lore? Boomer, where are you? Dude, did you know this place has a pool filled with beer? That's why I chose it. Come on, we have a review to do. Great, so let's start. Why don't I give you a little history lesson on the Blood Mist Isle? The area now known as the Blood Mist Isle was originally inhabited by Night Elves, like most part of Azeroth prior to Sundering. But we already talked about that. Those Night Elves built the city of Lorif Aran and grew pretty close to the dragon aspect Azera and their green dragonflight. But that changed, of course, during the War of the Agents. The Black Dragonfly attacked Lore Run, killing all the dragons and night elves there, before the Sundering gave the area the coup de grace. The landmass broke off the continent of Kalimdor and was uninhabited for thousands of years. This changed with the crash of the Exodor and the arrival of the Draenei. I know, there isn't much to say about the backstory of the Blood Mist Isle. But why is it called the Blood Mist Isle now? The answer is easy. Just like the Azur Mist Isle, the Blood Mist Isle was changed by the crash of the Exodor and its power crystals crashing into it. The water on the isle changed to a deep red and a healthy red mist lays over the area. That's all folks! Yep, so why don't we head to the isle itself and check in with our Draenei friend. First off, let me refresh your memory. After we finished our business on the Azur Mist Isle, we were sent to the Blood Mist Isle to help the survivors there and to join the Hand of Argus, an elite group of Draenei fighters. Like always, we can dip our toes into the zone and its story by doing some simple quests. This time, we start out at Castle's Alec Camp and are asked to collect some pairs for the animals there. But trouble comes knocking pretty fast. We are told that the Sunhawk Blood Elves are still around and they are planning to take over the Exodor. And that's not enough, they even plan an attack on the Azur Mist Isle. So we hop onto an Alec to warn our friends there. Ha, <laughs> they call the quest the Castle Run. Isn't that funny? It's a Star Wars reference. 
get it? It's about Star Wars. And Star Wars is cool and awesome, that means mentioning it is also cool and awesome. With that out of the way, let's head to our main base of operation, the Blood Watch. And just look at the number of quests here. Whoa, that's a lot. All right, this is going to be a doozy. So let's do this step by step. First off, we talk to a lady called Moriah. She asks us to find her husband Galahen, who was working at the Exodus Cryo Core when it crashed. We do find him, but he's taking a very, very deep nap. His ghost asks us to bring his necklace to his wife, and we promptly do so. Not the most difficult quest, but as I said, we start off slow. Next up we receive a letter from our old friend Captain Odysseus. He explains that he was visited by an old friend, a guy named Captain Edward Haynes. There's only one problem, Haynes has been dead for 20 years now. So let's figure out what's going on here. We head to the Wormscar Island and talk to the guy himself. Why does it always have to be ghosts? Haynes tells us of the blood curse, which is the reason for the ghostly activity on the island. To lift that curse, we first have to hunt some ghosts and deal with the Naga roaming the area. This part is interesting, since it tells the player how the Great Sundering changed some of the Night Elves into the first Naga. But wait, there's more to do here. As you can see, there are also dragon ghosts roaming the island. To take care of them, we have to take down the black dragon Razormore. It's okay, Boomer, you can look again. Last but not least, we talk to our new dwarven friend of the Explorers League. He asks us to find his pupil, a gnome called Whizbang. We find that guy hiding out at the beach, surrounded by murlocs. I really don't want to deal with those guys again, but I guess I have to. Alright, enough charts play. There's still the threat of the Sunhog Elves looming over the island. How could we get rid of them? It's not as difficult as you may think. The good thing is that we have a Blood Elf prisoner who we can press for information. He tells us that the Sunhawks are led by the evil and powerful Eredor Sironas. And that's not all. A missive reveals that the Sunhawks opened a gate to the Outlands to bolster their ranks. This is not good. So let's deal with that one first. We head to the Sunhawks main base, the Vector Call, and destroy their portal. Take that you stupid portal! So now we only have to deal with Sironas. With the help of the Demolisher Legozo, we blow up part of the Vector Coil and face off with the Eridor. Well, I guess she wasn't that powerful after all. Our victory over Sironas shatters the Blood Elf's advance and we are once again celebrated as the hero. Valen himself shows up to congratulate us and officially initiates us into the hand of Argus. Now that seemed really short and easy, right? Oh my friends, you couldn't be more wrong. Remember my complaints about the Ghostlands? The exact same thing applies here. Once again the game has you running around the zone to pick up an item or kill an enemy, just to send you right back after you've finished. Is it weird that both areas that got introduced in the Burning Crusade add-on suffer from this? And that problem could have easily been solved by updating it in the Cataclysm expansion. But Blizzard didn't. Why? I guess they don't care. And why should they? It's easy to leave the area once your level is high enough. And that showed during my time here. I'm not kidding, but while I was at the Blood Mist Isle, I didn't see a single other player. But then again, not everyone is as mad as me and trying to complete every single area. And that concludes this review. Why don't we head back home, Boomer? Yeah, let's party! Whew, that was fun, don't you think? That's one zone down in Kalimdor, only 16 more to go. So where are we heading next, Boomer? Boomer? Oh, sorry, that's my gym. Next time we are going to Ashara. Ooh, the former center of the Highborn Empire. That's going to be nice. Like always, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this review, let us know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. And become a Kegabo by subscribing to the channel! Alright, who wants to take a dive into the beer pool?